school for children, poor children living in central Vietnam where there's a lot of mountain, there's a lot of river. For 15 billion, for 15 billion Vietnamese currency. And for five years, no school. And then a Vietnamese who live, uh, a foreign Vietnamese who live in France, I believe, spent two, mil, two billion dollars and the school was, is running right now. And they're not belong to no government. If you're saying all the working class run, no, it's not. The government took over, of, like, take advantage but of I that agree thing. With you. I totally right. Agree with you. So I why are you agree. saying communism is awesome when actually I believe under communists firsthand? I disagree with that. You disagree with that? I think that that uh, hose. Welcome to Vietnam, sir. Welcome to Vietnam. I would love to show you. you open books, okay? <laughs> but you can do yourself a good service by trying to read what the... Can we what, move to the next look, question? The history of the next question. These are movements of national liberation. It's got nothing Dr. to Mike, do. Thank you. Not real communism. Okay, let's leave it up for the questions. Let's go for the questions. Any, uh, uh, with the free speech shirt? Yes. But do I get an answer to the question? You, you, no, you did not answer. No, oh, oh, you, you get did. a chance to answer. Right, just right. just so you understand my point, and I don't accept you guys to agree with me right now, but just take it under consideration, is that communism or, is not defined by a terminology. It's defined by what group of people is running. And you agree Vietnam was not run by working class people. Now, maybe you think it can never happen. I do, and I've given concrete example with what happened in Russia. But once and they're I think, ruling, they're not the working class anymore. I think some no, that's right. not, that doesn't have to happen that way. And, and, you know, just, just, just to finish, just to finish my thought, as a historian, all right, we studied the French Revolution, and we know that the revolution got increasingly militant until it was the Red Terror and the Jacobin, and then there's the reaction. This is the counter-revolution. It's called the Thermidorian Reaction. What I see what happened in Soviet Russia was not communism. It was a counter-revolution, and my evidence, A, is that Stalin had to murder every one of the guys that were close to Lenin. Trotsky, Zinavia, Bukharin, Kamenev. If we had somebody in our history that was responsible for the murder of Patrick Henry, Sam Adams, and uh, you know George Washington, they would not be considered patriots. They'd be considered traitors. Stalin's counter-revolution was just that. It was a traitor to the revolution. <laughs> it's not, okay, not in falling into the... It's, okay, uh, for you, question. It uh, kind of goes to both of you. Um, which system has had more massacres or killings in the world? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds each. Well, I mean, I think that's obvious. How about um, China? I mean, how how many people were killed in China? How many people were killed in North Korea? Because I know you said you lived in Russia, but he's kind of glossing over the fact that millions of people died. In Russia. I do. I know. I do not deny that. All I'm saying that has nothing to do with communism. The Stalin. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Stalin. You know. Again, I don't. I can't make you. I, I can't make you open your books, okay? Mm -hmm. But what Stalin did was he didn't only kill all the communists that led that revolution in 1917. He went after the trade union movement. He took all the militants and, and murdered them. He crushed the working class movement in that country. That has nothing to do with communism. And again, I suggest that you study the French Revolution because this happens in every revolution. Was, was China, was China communist? Absolutely not. Well, China was a never, nationalist. Never, but don't, whoa, whoa, don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. Let me finish. Well, hang on. You mentioned China. You mentioned China. I'm going to make a point about China, which is that they sent all of the bourgeois to the countryside in order to have an experience of what it was like to live among the working class, and they had massive famines. So it's not just that they have to send people to the gas chambers, it's not just that they have to send people to the gulags, the they gas starve their, their own people. Wrong country. <laughs> massive I starvation. Know, right? All right, I can tell you. I contend that China is question. not is not a communist country, and don't take my word for it. The American How commander convenient. of the Chinese army, his name is George Stilwell, said the same thing in his memos to Roosevelt. He said uh, Mao and this revolution is really a nationalist revolution with a thin veneer of, of uh, you know of terminology that they borrowed, but it's absolutely very nationalist. So I, want, I don't need to my follow-up is then what is a communist country? Like I exactly. told you what happened in Russia in 1970. They still murdered 600,000 Jews. I, I said there's no current that. one, but what I they did, current, what they did is <laughs> the <laughs> workers took over the factories, the peasants took over the countryside, they organized councils. I believe in democracy, and so they were operating a very democratic system 
Then they organized factory committees, and they started running the economy by themselves. And it worked. That's the point. It worked. And that's why the world capitalist, and again, you know, I encourage you to crack your textbooks or whatever, 26 <coughs> countries sent money and arms to crush this workers' experiment. And at the end of when the smoke clears, millions are dead. Millions are dead. But it's not because of communism. Okay. It's because of the anti-communists. Like they were the ones that launched the Civil next War. Question. You know we're that. Go to the next question. You should know that. Okay. Next question. Uh, you? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put a scenario, scenario forward just to simplify things. Let's say can that you, I have an idea. Can we get the microphone just yeah. so everyone Does can it reach over there? Because we're... Oh, no, I don't think up? it's going to reach you. Do you have a question? Come on. Stand up and speak real loud. Yeah, just speak really loud. Just speak very loud. <laughs> uh, let, let's say I have a... I'm going to put a scenario forward. Let's say I have an idea, and I work for 10 years to acquire the capital to make that idea come true, right? I get the money required to make it come true. I, I hire people vol who voluntarily agree to work for me for a certain wage to build something that I instruct them to build. After they build it, for the money that I earned previously, which let's say is a factory, I then get people who voluntarily agree to work for a certain wage to work at that factory, right? What would give you the right to come in and take that factory from me at the end <coughs> and give it to somebody else? But no, no, no. That's a completely uh, Pollyannish scenario because we know that's not how technology gets developed. We know. Uh, you're not answering his question. I am. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a factor. It's, not Sam, the, it's a simple factor. The I'm just telling you, historically, Robert Fulton did not go and get private investors to develop his steam engine. They were not interested in it. They, they got government money to develop that technology. You all know no, in this, this room. Scenario, whether this you're, scenario. You're, but you're having a fanciful okay. scenario. Whether it's well, the smartphone or the computer, this is all government funding. That's where the, tech, what if it's the a innovation. Company? What if it's a produce Let's company? Let's say it's private. But you know, you know what the one innovation that they can claim is done really by the private sector? I kid you not, Viagra. <laughs> but if you look at all the technologies in the world, it's military spending, it's government so funds and questions. granting. So what would give you the? Well, I'm just saying it's it's a, it's a completely the work that somebody puts scenario. into developing a factory purely for their own. They they put in the words of developing everything. What would give you the right, the moral right, the ethical right, whatever you want to call it, to come in and take it away at gunpoint and give it to somebody else? No, I think that it's not about gunpoint, but the people working in that factory are the ones that are really producing the commodity. They're doing it voluntarily. You're not forcing them to work there. Oh, well, I don't know. You know, okay. Anatole France famously said that uh, in capitalism, a rich man and a poor man are equally free to sleep on a bridge at night. We're gonna jump into the next question. Next question. Uh, that, uh, with a gray shirt? Me? Yes. Okay. Um, I just give one definition and a question for Jennifer. Yes, I, I want to hear something for Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I don't think we describe what communism is, and the most uh, common definition of communism is classless, mindless, stateless society, and under that we don't really have a poster communist society. So we can't really compare things like Vietnam and China and stuff like that. So now my question for Jennifer. At the rate at which AI and automation is going, do you think that in the next 80 to 100 years, we'll have enough jobs that the market deems valuable enough for people to work at? Or do you think, like, do you think capitalism can survive automation, basically? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, let's just say this. Let's not rush it, okay? So, if, you know, it... But why not? Why not? If uh, capitalism is innovation, Automation is innovation. Why should we slow it down? Why should we not? Well, here's what, what, what I mean when I say let's not rush it. Um, when I'm talking about all of the legislation and uh, promotion of minimum wage and having the government set what the minimum wage is, which I like to call the, the Robot Incentivization Act. Um, so, you know, yeah, these things are going to happen, but government doesn't need to artificially come in and accelerate the rate, the rate at which they're, they're, it's happening. Now, that said, I mean, we are having many uh, increases in productivity that I think are creating new industries, are creating new kinds of jobs, entertainment, service industries. Um, so I, I do believe that, that we will continue to have a lot of economic growth, but we're, but we're also not going to need to be slowing it down by having the government continue to raise taxes and depress the rate of capital formation so that people can have come up with these new ideas. When we talk about what kind of uh, system is going to be best for millennials, it's not necessarily about Getting a job that gets taken over by AI is about having a great idea and pitching it to private equity companies and getting investments. Thank you. Uh, I'm saving a question for, for you. Uh, she, what's your name? Uh, my name is Alex. She was the first person here today. So give her a hand of applause. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you did say that you did not 
believe that pre-existing conditions should be something that you should be allowed to like, like those should not be protected. Basically, is for it. Are, are you for or against there being protection for people that want to buy insurance that have pre-existing conditions? Should they have a penalty, basically, for trying to buy? I think that there should be a variety of health insurance products out there. I think that once you have everybody <coughs> to the same system, then all of a sudden it's going to be, well, I don't want you to pay for Viagra, I want you to pay for birth control, I believe that you should have pre-existing condition. So I, I think that you should be able to have products which are going to be for people that, you know, you have a pre-existing condition, you can come and get your insurance here, and you can also have products for people that, that don't have pre-existing conditions. However, I would say that all of this is going to be kind of a side point because we're never going to get rid of uh, government insurance. And we're going to continue to have expanding uh, government role in health care. But what's really going to, I think, be the best benefit for people in extending life and preventing disease, it's going to come from the private sector. It's going to, to come from innovations in drug research. And in my sister uh, runs a, uh, a biotechnology company that does medical devices for IUDs insertions and all of that. <coughs> that money didn't come from the government. That came from private investors. And that is actually what's going to, it, whether or not it'll ever be covered by insurance or not, it'll have products out there that, and services out there in the marketplace that will make uh, healthier services more available. I suppose my question would be, though, what good are those services if the average person cannot afford to have them? If these services continue to be very expensive, for example, I would cite type 1 diabetes. Anyone that's familiar with this disease would know that type 1 diabetes is not related to any sort of personal choice that someone can make. It is childhood diabetes that is caused by an autoimmune deficiency that most people get very early in life, 5 years old to 12. So at this point, if they are not able to afford their medicine, then they will die. So what is the use of having innovations with diabetes care if the average person with diabetes can afford these things? An insulin pump can cost upwards of $7,000 without insurance. So at that point, I guess my question would be, what should be done for these kind of people that have disorders that they have no control over but would not be protected by the free market? Well, I think that we should also have uh, mobility within states so that you might have some states that, like Oregon, or if you want to take over California and make it a communist paradise, that you can move to those states where people are going to be forced to pay for other people's um, treatments, and that would be fine. But by and large, I would say that the more, every time government gets involved in anything, the prices go up, the quality goes down. So I, I definitely would say that having uh, less government involvement in all sectors of uh, the economy will allow people to um, earn better livings and afford better medical care. All right, well, thank you. Next question, uh, with the yellow shirt. Yeah, you. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, so I mean, both of the, these sound kind of like ideologies that are <coughs> is actually happening. <laughs> uh, but yours is an ideology, but it's cool. Uh, so I kind of just wanted to, in bring, its in, infancy. In I, its I infancy. Just wanted to bring it into I'm, a more uh, realistic realm. So No, I'm right. absolutely let, realistic. Let, let, let yeah, I, I understand. Uh, so <laughs> we live in a capitalist society, and in a capitalist society, I live in East LA, right? And I fear something called gentrification. Gentrification comes because we valorize, we devalorize properties, we make them, we drain them of all of their good stuff, and we put those resources elsewhere. So we put, we move money around, essentially, that's how capital works. We keep moving things around so that way capital can keep growing. So those places are drained, we max out the suburbs, and then we come back and kick all the, all the communities out and start to rebuild, we revalorize those areas, thanks to capitalism being kind of a jerk. But capitalism is not always a jerk. You know? in, in that instance, it's kind of a jerk. Uh, and you had mentioned something, which, no, you're right. uh, which was that, you know, oh, the, the, the winners write history. You didn't say that, but that's kind of what I read. Uh, the winners write history. And, uh, like, my neighborhood was not part of the winners because we were pretty much exploited.